From the floor of the 2011 AHR Expo in Las Vegas, this is Scott Arnold, Executive Editor of HPAC Engineering Magazine. I'm at the booth of Electrostatic Technology, and joining me is Sales and Marketing Manager Adam Wilworth. Adam is going to talk to us about the problem of VFD-induced currents and his company's solution. Adam? Thank you, Scott. Yes, what we have is um, we have a, sol a really great solution for uh, getting rid of the shaft currents that end up causing bearing damage in uh, VFD-driven motors. And you can see the type of bearing damage that we're talking about. The type of bearing damage is this fluting damage. You can see that pattern in the bearing race. And that's caused by electrical voltages that arc inside the motor bearings, which, and the voltages are induced on the shaft of the motor by the VFD. It happens in all sizes of bearings, even some of the smaller ones. And what we're going to demonstrate is the voltage on this Baldor motor um, run off of a, a VFD. And we're just going to start by, uh, by taking shaft voltage readings so you can see what the problem is that we're addressing. This here is a Fluke oscilloscope. It's a 200 megahertz um, oscope, very handy for field type um, uh, measurements and this voltage probe here is what we're going to apply to the motor shaft. Now when I operate the motor on the drive, I'll just turn the motor on. It's going to take a minute to come up to speed. You can apply this shaft uh, voltage probe directly to the shaft of the motor. So Aegis is the brand name of the, of the product and also developed the shaft voltage probe tip and this kit that fits onto the Fluke 199C. And you can see right here the voltage that's induced on the shaft of the motor. It's right here in the O-scope. And this is what we're going to try to get rid of with the shaft, uh, with the bearing protection ring. So we're going to take this, uh, uh, the bearing protection ring, apply it to the shaft of the motor, and I'm going to do an installation where I'm going to demonstrate all the steps that are necessary and to, to do a um, shaft grounding ring installation. Now the first thing that's necessary is you need to know what the shaft diameter of the motor is and so we use just a simple caliper to measure the shaft diameter of the motor. And we end up with a reading of 0.875 which is the standard U dimension of the, uh, um, of the motor and this is a, a 143T frame motor and those are standard dimensions. So once we know what that, that uh, shaft diameter is, we can choose the correct ring for the motor. We've developed a new product, and here's a couple of examples. The new product line that we call it our universal kit, uh, it's a, we call it the U-Kit, the Aegis U-Kit. And the Aegis U-Kit is sized for all of the different shaft diameters from a 56 frame motor all the way up to 440 frame um, any NEMA motor frame and you can just select the product by frame and stick it on the motor. And so this one right here, it has three brackets and you can see that that's applicable to this type of motor because of the, the design of the motor. So you just slide it right on here and you can see how the fibers are touching the shaft. And we're going to be attaching it with a conductive epoxy adhesive right here in these three points on the motor uh, shaft. So before we get started, I'm first going to put on some safety equipment. Always wear um, safety glasses just in case. And then as we go through, we're going to eventually wear our gloves as well because we're going to be dealing with a, a conductive epoxy. So you, you want to really make sure that the shaft is very clean. Sometimes there's a, uh, you can see the, the paint that's on the shaft surface. You want to remove that completely so you have a completely clean shaft. We just take a fine grit sandpaper, remove any paint that might be on the shaft surface. The next thing that we want to do <clears throat> is we want to coat the area where the fibers touch the shaft with what we call our Aegis colloidal silver. It's a silver coating, very fine silver engineered particles that add to the conductive surface of the shaft, so it enhances that conductive surface. So we'll take that paint, shake it up, and this is where I use my gloves. It comes with a brush, just like a model paint. A little jar like this will do about 30 motors. And then just to speed up the drying, I'm going to heat it with a, a heat gun. Next thing we do, we take our Aegis ring and we mark where we're going to remove the paint off the end bracket of the motor. So I just take a marking pen, 
or to mix up the uh, the conductive epoxy, you put two. I use about a half inch equal amounts of conductive uh, epoxy. So it's just a standard two part. I take my A and B parts. Comes with a little mixing stick. And I thoroughly mix this A and B part of the epoxy. And what you want is a consistency. You want thoroughly mixed a consistency that you can work with to apply it to the back of this bearing protection ring, the Aegis bearing protection ring in this U kit. This process is very straightforward. You just take your conductive epoxy and I'll put it right around the edges of this bracket. So I have a nice surface of, uh, of conductive epoxy on each one. And then I take the ring, the bearing protection ring, slide it over the shaft of the motor, and press it against the motor right where I removed the paint so that I have a nice conductive link with the conductive epoxy. And that's how I grind the, ground the, that's how I ground the motor uh, through the ring. I'm gonna take my heat gun And just for a few minutes, usually about five minutes or so, I'll just heat the areas where the conductive epoxy is attached to the motor. And that will provide a very strong bond to the end bracket of the motor and provide the path to ground for the Aegis ring so that you can take the voltage off the shaft of the fibers. One thing you want to check I'll turn this off for a sec. One thing you want to check is you want to make sure that this little gap around the ring is basically even. The eyeball is all you really need. The fibers will help self-center it. So after you heat it for three or four or five minutes, something like that, it's going to take some time for the epoxy to actually cure. That's, that's about an eight to 24 hour period, depending on how much heat you put on it. You can run the motor usually within about half hour or so, um, and that's just to allow the epoxy to harden. It'll cure completely after about um, 8 to 24 hours. Uh, if you don't heat it, it's 24 hours. If you heat it first, it's about 8 hours. Now when we're done installing the Aegis bearing protection ring, we take another shaft voltage reading, and as you can see on the oscilloscope, all the voltage is gone and it's gone to ground, which protects the bearings from the VFD-induced voltage that was on the shaft before. And that's uh, how we do the final check to make sure that the bearing is properly protected. Thank you, Adam. From the 2011 AHR Expo in Las Vegas, this is Scott Arnold.